like to welcome you if you're new to the channel. I'm Danny with the Skate Power Sports and today we're going to be expanding on our step-by-step -step how to maintenance and upgrade video series for your Can-Am ATV. And in this video we'll be sharing the step-by-step -step procedure on how to change the rear diff fluid, otherwise known as the final drive oil, in your Can-Am ATV. Should be a pretty straightforward one beer job. Let's get started. So BRP suggests we change the rear diff fluid, also known as the final drive oil, every 100 hours, 3,000 kilometers, or one year whichever comes first. The book also mentions to bump that up to every 50 hours under muddy, dusty, or severe conditions. Now, I also like to verify the oil level is about a half an inch below the bottom of the fill plug every couple months at least to ensure an unnoticed leak doesn't cost me a thousand dollar rear diff. And feel free to pause the video here to see the tools, parts, and beers required to get this easy job done. And here's some good news, this procedure ought to be very similar, if not identical, for almost any Renegade or Outlander you got. As every operator guide I've seen calls for the same 75W140 gear oil for both the rear diff and the gearbox. The only thing I noticed in the operator's guide is some years and models rear diff oil capacity is only 250 milliliters, so be sure to check your operator's guide and if you have a hard time finding the capacity, leave a comment with what year and model bike you're working on and I'll see if I can't help you out with that. But with all that boring shit out of the way, the service manual says we'll want to get this job started with the bike cleaned up and on a level surface. I also find the oil drains more thoroughly if we take it out for a quick spin to warm up the oil. Next, we'll need to locate our rear diff 6mm Allen fill plug and 3 16 Allen drain plug. And with the bike cleaned up, you should be able to see them hiding on the back left uh, or the driver's side of the rear diff directly behind and below that driver's side rear axle. And if the bike's all muddy, you might have to start with a pressure washer to get a good visual, but once I can see them, I like to use a good quality brake parts cleaner to clean up the plugs and surrounding areas. And even a small pick to remove any debris from the head of these tiny Allen plugs to avoid stripping them. Next, the book tells us to grab a drain bucket and go ahead and remove the six millimeter Allen fill plug up top first. And removing the fill plug before the drain plug is important for two reasons. First of all, it should help the fluid drain more smoothly and thoroughly. And secondly, and probably more importantly, in the event the fill plug is stripped or we can't get it out of there for any reason, we won't drain out all our precious final drive lubrication without a way to refill it. So this 15 millimeter lower diff receiver bolt was right in the way of my Allen wrench. But good news, it's really not a big deal to temporarily remove it, if necessary, to get a good squared up connection with our tiny drain plug. So frustratingly, a four and a half millimeter Allen seemed to be too small for this drain plug. And a five millimeter was definitely too big. Fortunately, a 3 16 seemed to fit it pretty damn good. Let's try not to strip it, cross some fingers. Oh, that was easy. Nice. Let's see what this oil looks like. Beautiful. So while this oil is draining all over the skid plate and makes a complete mess of your garage, driveway, or trailer, it's the perfect time to inspect the fluid for any excessive debris. And the color of this fluid actually looks pretty fine. But if yours is black, burnt looking, or all murky like water's gotten into the rear diff, it wouldn't hurt to add some fresh fluid with the drain plug still out to try and flush out any contaminants out of this differential. And if you're finding any of this rear diff fluid information helpful, do me a quick favor and give this video a thumbs up. And once she's finally stopped dripping, we can go ahead and smoothly reinstall the drain plug by hand, being real careful not to cross thread it. And from my research in the service manual, this 3 16 Allen drain plug only requires about 7.5 newton meters or five foot pounds of torque which ain't much force at all, y'all. So I was sure to save myself the misery of over-tightening and just snug it up tight without bearing down on it at all. Over-tightening would likely strip the head right out of this tiny Allen bolt, or worse, strip the threads in the case of the diff forever. And with the drain plug back in, we can reinstall that 15 millimeter lower diff bolt if you had to remove it and retighten the 15 millimeter nut that goes with it to the 66 foot-pounds of torque the book calls for. Now that it's time to refill the differential, you'll notice there's really no easy, mess-free way to put it in directly from the bottle or even really get a funnel in there far enough in the fill hole. So we'll need to find some tubing of some sort. And I didn't end up finding some flexible tubing on this old cheap siphon that would fit in the fill hole. So I just cut off about eight inches of that tubing and jammed it on the end of the funnel to make getting fresh fluid in there a lot easier. I also find adding some tubing to the bottle itself also works good. So with a way to get the fluid in there, I began adding the prescribed 300 milliliters for this particular machine's rear diff. And in the past, I've tried measuring out the 75W140 in a measuring cup, but after doing this job several times over the years, I've found that just setting the bottle on a level surface and using the marks on the bottle itself 
to be the most accurate way to measure out the prescribed 300 or 250 milliliters depending on your machine, assuming you can avoid spilling any. And again, of course the $45 bottle of BRP's XPS 75W140 gear oil is recommended, but I don't mind saving a few bucks on Mobile 175W140 as it's an API GL5 full synthetic gear oil and meets BRP's requirements for both rear diff and gearbox for this machine. Speaking of the gearbox, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that easy two beer gearbox oil change video or any of the other step-by-step -step maintenance videos we've put out for these awesome ATVs. Now I used to think you could just fill the rear diff up until it spills and overflows like the gearbox and that'd leave you with the correct level. But after purchasing a service manual for this machine, I found a correct level would actually leave our fluid level about a half an inch below the lower edge of our fill plug or 20 millimeters below that lower edge to be exact, with plus or minus five millimeters or so of wiggle room. All that just to say if you lose track of how much fluid is going in on our way to the 300 milliliters or 250 milliliters if that's the capacity for your bike, just find something with a half inch 90 degree elbow and bring the fluid up to the correct level, which is a half an inch below the bottom of our fill plug. And if you happen to overfill it till it spills, like I just did, just grab your handy horse catheter syringe to remove the excess half inch of fluid. And BRP suggests we replace this small copper crush washer, but I'm cheap, so I usually just clean it up and reuse it with our six millimeter Allen fill plug. And torque specs for this machine's fill plug are 22.5 newton meters or 17 foot pounds. Or in this case, just good and snug. It's also critical we don't forget to try and clean off this whole area and take her out for a quick ride so we can check for leaks around our fill and drain plug. So I really hope y'all found some of that rear diff information helpful. And if you did, do me a quick favor and give the video a thumbs up. And of course, as always, if it wasn't helpful or if I missed anything or you have any thoughts or suggestions on how I can improve these videos or really any comments on this rear diff final drive oil change topic in general, please leave a quick comment down in the section below. I'd love to hear from you. But the cops are coming hot beer. And we got her loaded up and the storm's coming, but I really got to stop and take a second and thank the almost 5,000 y'all who found some of the how-to content on this channel and decided to subscribe. I really appreciate y'all. And if you're new here, I'd encourage you to subscribe as well because those were only beers number 195 and 196 on our way to finishing the Escape Power Sports 1,000 beers of step-by-step how-to video content for your machine and or truck and or skid loader and or whatever else we get around here that we need to work on. I'd like to welcome you if you're new to the channel. I'm Danny with Escape Power Sports. I really want to thank y'all for watching. And as always, we'll see y'all on the trails.